Hi there, I'm Gianni Infantino, president of FIFA, and you are listening to the Football History Boys podcast. And welcome to another episode of the Football History Boys podcast with me, Ben Jones, and as always, my partner in crime, Gareth Thomas. Hello, everyone. Thank you. First of all, just got to say thank you to President of FIFA Gianni Infantino for introducing the podcast today. That sounds really strange to say, doesn't it? It does sound a bit odd. Um, but thank yeah, you. Surprising. Thank you, Gianni. Yeah. yeah thanks for thanks for the response. From Friend the, uh, of the show. Yeah. And FIFA president, a very speculative email, I think, we sent out to him. But he loved it. Yeah. It was a really nice reply, wasn't it? Really, really nice reply saying thank you for your contribution to our beautiful game and things like that. Yeah. Brilliant. And I think it's apt today that this week's podcast is all about the greatest players of all time and about all these different countries in the world coming together, just like FIFA. So there we go. Right. Want to tell us a bit more? Yeah, so uh, we were thinking about how we could do another one before school starts. School is back for us next week. Um, and we thought, let's get another podcast in before that happens. And so we were speculating about what we could do. Um, and I thought, why not do our Dream 11s? But the Dream 11s often end up looking the same when you ask people for their best 11. So I thought, let's solidify this as a 4-3-3. Let's go for um, one player maximum from each country. And let's also say that you've got to have one from the nation where you live or where you were born or who you support. So um, we <coughs> posted that out on our Twitter and Facebook, and we've got a staggering amount of replies. Huge That's amount. Pretty surprising, actually. I think we were expected about 10, about 10 replies, yeah. as usual. We've ended up with 184. That's just off Twitter, though, isn't it? There's more on Facebook as well. And, yeah. And face-to-face opinions, yeah, incredible. Some it's voice a, recordings for you later as well. We've done yeah. um, really, really well. And so what we're going to do today, then, is go through uh, mine and yours, Ben, um, we're going to go through some of our favourites from all the 184 plus that we've sent. And we're also going to then compile into the most mentioned one per country uh, players. And then we're going to give you that final dream team that you, the people, selected. Right, so shall we start with the goalkeepers? Let's start with the goalkeepers. You kick us off. We've kept the teams separate from each other. We've got them on our whiteboard here with them covered up. Ben, you reveal your goalkeeper to me. So right now we've got, yeah, as you just said, we've got a whiteboard in front of us. And both our teams as well, but we've covered each one with magnets and post-it notes. I'm going to reveal them one at a time just because it's a bit more fun. Yeah. For two of us, right, okay, first player for me is, there we go, Neville Southall and goal. I've used up my Welsh allocation. My Welsh allocation, and I've used it as the goalkeeper because 92 caps for Wales. Uh, until Chris Gunter recently, he was the most capped player. And from what we've... I did actually get to watch him myself for Wales, but from what we've been told... Especially, I think the art of goalkeeping on Twitter are very, uh, yeah, very positive towards him. And of course, friend of the show. And a friend of the show. So, yeah, he's retweeted us a few times, is not he? So, Neville yeah. Southall is my goalkeeper. Uh, there we go. Who's yours? Mine. So, compiling mine, I thought, how do we do this? Because it's, you know, do we do just plays we've seen? Is it just plays we've seen live? Um, I've gone for sort of plays that mean something to me. So, I may not have seen everyone of these live, but they certainly mean something to me. And uh, my keeper is Peter Schmeichel. Oh. Okay. Um, Man United I was never I didn't like Man United um, no. s- still not particularly a fan no. but um, obviously a, a fantastic goalkeeper in that treble winning side um, but the memory for me is uh, he is the first goalkeeper I can recall seeing score a goal it was on match of the day yeah. I looked the goal up the other day actually because I, I remember it's ingrained I think it was about 2002 it's Raston Villa I think it was against Manchester City potentially his old club or, or certainly I remember it was for Aston Villa mm-hmm. um, came up scored I think it was a volley or something like that, a half volley it was ridiculous yeah. and I remember it and I think yeah she might get in for me and obviously Denmark means just not using up uh, another team with someone else too yeah and I, from what I can see so far is your printer needs some more ink uh, <laughs> it's yes. a little bit like the, the green isn't it yeah green. my wife was like I can't believe you printed out of that in colour but you know Right, we mentioned it now, actually. The, the site we used was it My Greatest Eleven, a brilliant website where you can compile your greatest 11s um, and put it on a lovely little pitch background. Yeah. And you've also got all the historical shirts there, mm. too. So it's got their accurate shirts that they would have worn. 
uh, but it did rinse the printer in. Brilliant. Right. So looking at the, the listeners, what they've gone for, uh, I've printed off all 184 teams. Um, <laughs> took me a long time to compile this and I've written next to each one the country from which the person's from. So uh, first of all, I need to mention who got the most mentions and it was your goalkeeper, Peter Schmeichel. 57 times he came up in teams. So we had 184 teams all, all together. Yeah. And Peter Schmeichel, 57 times. Um, Fair enough. I mean, I think it's probably because he's Denmark and that gives you that. But obviously, he's an incredibly good goalkeeper. He won Euros, didn't he? Mm-hmm. And I also, I, another thing I meant to measure, I, I, I like Casper as well. I think, fair enough. I like it that there's a parent and a, you know, it's father and a son <laughs> yeah. who both won the Premier League. I quite yeah, like that too. That's, that's a good one. Right. Um, do you want to have a guess who came second? Ooh. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, Casillas probably or Buffon fairly high up. I mean, obviously they that's your Spanish and that's your Italian allocation if you pick them. But surely they must have been high for people. Uh, right. So Lev Yashin was second. Oh, of course, um, yeah, yeah. You know, legendary goalkeeper for USSR. the USSR. Yeah. Uh, Twenty nine times he came up into teams. Third was actually Edwin Van der Sar. Yes. Yeah. Eighteen fair one, and I guess uh, you know Netherlands is not particularly maybe tons you're going to try and fit into your side. Yeah. Um, and actually, I've written at the top, I've written surprises. So I've got the players who I thought surprised me that they didn't come up as much as I thought. Okay. And actually, Buffon and Casillas are two of my surprises. I Gigi, think that is, is it trying to keep your Italian allocation for outfields? someone else? Yeah. yeah, so Gigi Buffon only had eight, yeah. and Casillas only had five. But we'll, um, we'll find out yeah. why, because there's one player who comes up more than anyone else yeah. soon, and he's, he's Italian. I think for me, Buffon would, if, if there was no limit, it would have been Buffon for me, without doubt, in terms of... Whilst I've been alive, Buffon has just been staggeringly good, hasn't he? Okay, just looking down for a few surprises. Um, well, actually, so we talk goal scorer and goalkeepers. Schillaver came up uh, yes, a lot, yeah. actually. Yeah. So a few Paraguayan um, comments back, and they had Schillaver in their team. Uh, someone from Oman replied. Um, their name is Omar Mazin. And they had Ali Al Hadji. Yes, in their team. I saw that one. I like that. <laughs> The ex Wigan keeper. Because um, that we had, what was it, 35 countries over that? Re- yeah, replied to our 35, 36, yeah. Um, Arta Boric came up, um, probably quite surprising. And what I did notice was pretty much all the US li- listeners replied to Tim Howard and goal. You would, wouldn't you? So that they used up their uh, country allocation for their goalkeeper. Um, but yeah, otherwise, pretty much the usual suspects really. Czech, uh, Khan. Yeah, and so on. Cool, back should we four. go on to defence then? Back four, I'll kick us off then. Right back for me is uh, this man, it is Cafu. Right back for me is also Cafu. There we go. I think that's not very surprising. You um, texted me, didn't you, actually, with your reason the other day? Yeah, because as I said, I, I'm picking players who mean something to me. And um, 2002 was my first World Cup. I'm sure lots of our listeners have far more World Cups than that. But 2002 is the first one I really remember. And that iconic image of Cafu holding the World Cup is sort of ingrained on me that as well. Right on the shirt, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, where I think this is this is football for me. I absolutely love it. Um, my dad broke his ankle, ankle that tournament trying to play <laughs> football with me in the garden because I was like, come on, play like Brazil. <laughs> and he never played again. Yeah. Um, so, it, I mean, yeah, that World Cup has a lot of memories for me. So Cafu gets in and I think, yeah, sort of all around good bloke as well, Cafu. Yeah, he's quite... Uh... He's quite good on Twitter, isn't he? He comes up with a few pearlers every now and then. Yeah. Uh, but he's, he's mine as well. Just an absolutely unbelievable right back. I remember first watching him during Liverpool's run to win in the UEFA Cup in 2001 and he was playing for Roma. Yeah. Uh, and that, and a really good Roma team, actually. Uh, and I remember thinking, he's class. He was up and down the wing. Brilliant player. And then on to AC Milan. So next player then? Next player for me, I've used at my Welsh allocation, John Charles. At centre-back. At centre back, um, a bit of it. Oh, it's not a cheat because he was a fantastic centre back. Kind of quite a few times actually, um, for listeners. Yeah, but obviously I wanted to keep him as a uh, centre back because there were four players I wanted. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, should we need him? Should the team, which I hope wouldn't be conceded, but should we be conceded? We can stick, stick him up front as well, and he'll do a decent job for us. Yeah. Um, obviously Welsh legend, Juventus, greatest ever foreign player. We've talked about that in the past. One of Wales' greatest. Um, so yeah, he gets it. He's easy popped up a few times in defence, actually. Uh, Josh Thomas, who's written for us before, he yeah. got John Charles in his team. Uh, There's quite a few mentions. I'm, and actually, interestingly, I looked through and lots of them were at centre back. I think people have probably done the same, trying to keep their forwards free. And, and so, some of them weren't Welsh as well. So we had um, Gary McKenzie actually got John Charles in his team. Uh, there we go. So pretty, pretty cool. That my one then. My first centre back is of course um, De Kaiser. 
Franz Beckenbauer. And he is my he second is centre second. back. And I like that you've got him in a modern German shirt and I've got him in the old shirt there. Yeah. Okay, so Franz Beckenbauer, yeah. Um, the f- one of the first uh, libero positions, a sweeper sort of uh, defender. Mm-hmm. Revolutionised defending. And my favourite story about Franz Beckenbauer is during the game of the century with Italy, when they lost 4-3, West Germany did, yeah. um, he played all that extra time with a broken arm in a sling. That's well played. Yeah, the whole the whole game. Yeah. The whole and I think I've picked him as well. Because a historical option, obviously, the thing that it means to me is just uh, that 74 World Cup is probably one of my favourites in terms of the stories that go with it. East Germany, West Germany, the only time they ever met in competitive action. It was hosted in West Germany. Um, and they lost to East Germany. And it was a, a humiliation for the West Germans. Um, and I think Helmut Schön, their coach, was an East German. Mm-hmm. And he effectively gave up after that. It was the third group game. And he couldn't believe that he'd lost with the other side. And, and apparently it's Beckenbauer who sort of pushed them on to win that World Cup. He was the man who regrouped them. He was, he was superb, wasn't he, Beckenbauer? So in terms of historical options for me, definitely Beckenbauer. And he is the most uh, picked player in defence for uh, centre-back, actually, from all the listeners. He came up only 60 times. So <laughs> 60 times. So he's come up a lot of times. Phenomenal. Uh, my second centre-back is English. It's Bobby Moore. So I think, I think one of the first images of football I can remember seeing is that image of him lifting the World Cup in 66, epitomising um, the 60s and the change that was going through the country at the time. And yeah, what a player. Um, very famous for that tackle in the 1970 World Cup on, on Pele. Yeah. Oh, no, Jezinho, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah just a, an all-round great player and a great person as well. Yeah. Um, very fondly remembered by his peers and yeah. uh, by West Ham fans. I was tempted, I was also tempted, I you know I've mentioned the Vincent Company, just as I said, he's you know, maybe not one of the greatest of all time, but in terms of players who mean something to me, Company yeah. has just been that, the Premier League era and the Man City sort of last 10 years, however long he was Didn't there. Want Man City. Titus Bramble? Superb. No. Nah, not for me. John Allen Boomsong? And if we're talking Cardiff City, Mark Hudson, because I absolutely love Mark Hudson. If we're talking Liverpool, I'd have to go for probably Sammy Sam, Sammy 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 yeah. Right. Okay, left back, pretty easy, surely. Left back, I think, is we agree, and uh, so do most of the listeners. Uh, Maldini. Yeah, Paolo Maldini, I've got him as well. Um, what a player. Uh, you're just incredible, I remember mean, that um, <laughs> 2005 Champions League final scoring after 52 seconds a volley from the from the, uh, from the the free kick. Absolutely incredible player. Um, I remember just thinking he was cool. He's yeah. He's a really cool... He's still a cool guy. He's a cool bloke. Good looking lad, you know, he's he's a fine, fine man. And um, one of the stories I like about him is how he just just loves football. Like He used to go home after training and just drink football. I can't remember, I think it was Balotelli may have said how he's so different to him in that way because he doesn't do anything with football outside mm. of football. Whereas for him, Maldini would go home and just read football, write about football, do it. And he just loved the game. And I think he epitomised that really, didn't he? And obviously a, a one club man as well. Yes. And all, and his kids are now, aren't they, as well? Yes, yeah. Uh, all at the AC Milan Academy. I think yeah. one of them actually is old enough to play for the team now. Yeah, um, yeah but what a player. I remember him in that defence in uh, 2002 World Cup again, going back to that with like Nesta and stuff, things like that in the same team. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's some incredible Italian defenders. Berezi was mentioned quite a lot times by listeners. Yeah. Um, their teams um, Nesta again uh, Costa Curta a couple of times some incredible players um, so there we go so the most mentions for defenders altogether Paolo Maldini with a staggering 110 teams out of 184 he was put in and there have um, been some fine Italians as well so to use up your allocation on Maldini is yeah yeah I mean you, yeah you've got your midfielders and your strikers yeah so fantastic players yeah. there yeah, Beckenbauer's, as I said, 60 times. Actually, the most mentioned right back wasn't Cafu, it was actually Philip Lahm, uh, German captain from the 2014 World Cup. Uh, 58 times he was in He was superb, was Quite he? comfortably. Uh, Lillian Charam came out quite a lot, yeah. right back. Got um, the French allocation used on that as well, yeah. Miles behind Maldini and left back, Ashley Cole. Another surprise centre back, though, you, so it was Vidic, wasn't it? Yeah, Vidic, um, yeah, 33 times. So he's actually the second most mentioned centre-back. Uh, I don't know if that's a lot of Man United fans getting on board. Yeah, or... and also I think it is, like we said, it's the uh, the fact that he's perhaps Serbian and you can therefore get away with him because he's not part of your allocation. That's true. Uh, that's yeah, a bit of Carlos, only 18, 18 teams he was in. Quite surprised by that. Maybe that's because of the Brazilian thing again. I don't know. But there you go. Uh, right, defenders all done. I'm happy with that? Yeah, let's take a break and then we'll come back and talk about our midfielders. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Welcome back to the podcast. Now, Gareth and I were just checking through the listeners' defences to see if any had the same as us. And five people had the same as mine. I'll just read them out to you now. Uh, Joe Zambataro, Gwyn Jenkins, who's written for us in the past, Chaotic Weevil, Stuart Carrington, and my brother, Sam Jones, all have the same defence as me. I've actually got Sam's uh, whole team here. Okay, my World Fantasy Dream Team 11 for the Football History Boys starts with Big Nev Southall from Wales in goal. Uh, As right back, I've gone for the attacking fullback from Brazil, Cafu. Um, The coolest defender of all time from Italy is my left back, Maldini. Uh, Centre halves from England, Bobby Moore. And from Germany, De Kaiser, that's Franz Beckenbauer. Uh, in midfield, I've gone with Zizou from France, Zinedine Zidane. Uh, I've got Luis Figo from Portugal, Ballon d'Or winner in 2000. Great attacking midfielder. Uh, and Georgi Hadji from Romania, um, sublime goal scorer midfielder. Played for Barca and Madrid. I, I could watch him for hours. And then up front, I've gone with Hristo Stoichkov from Bulgaria. He was in the first ever game that I, I ever went to watch as a young lad. Uh, Ballon d'Or winner, part of Cruyff's dream team. Um, Van Basten, three times Ballon d'Or winner uh, from Holland. And of course, the GOAT. It's Lionel Messi of Argentina. If you'd like to get involved, like Sam, thank you very much for that, Sam. Uh, you can do. You can look us up in the usual places on Twitter at TFHBS. You can email us at thefootballhistoryboys at hotmail.com. Or you can look us up on Facebook, The Football History Boys, and uh, find us there. Get in touch. We'd love to hear some of your opinions on things that we're debating in the future. Uh, just for me, uh, yeah, noting that Chris Malone and Josh Thomas, you also had the same defence as me. But let's uh, move on to the midfielders then. Let's see who we've got and let's see who some of our listeners have got. So right. kick us off, Ben. Okay, Who's your... This is just my hardest pick of all the players mm. on the whole team. Because there was two players I could have gone for. So I've gone for 2010 World Cup winner, winning goal, Andres Iniesta in my team. What a player. Now, I love Iniesta. I think he's my favourite player ever who... Hasn't played for Liverpool, basically. I like, I like, I love him more than Messi. I think he's obviously. I don't think he's as good as Messi. Yeah. But to watch, I've never seen him have a bad game. Just incredible. I remember in that two thousand and nine run to the final. Even though Messi was obviously in that team, when people would say, "Oh, you're going to watch the Barcelona game tonight," they'd always say, "Back in two thousand nine, you need to watch Iniesta." They wouldn't say watch Messi. They would yeah. say watch Iniesta. He is unbelievable, and that's why he's in Messi. But the hard thing was. Well, either him or Javi, depending on. Yes, I, I love Javi, actually. Javi was always my favourite. I don't know why. I just, yeah, I love Javi. But oh, it's both phenomenal. I'll reveal my Spaniard then. Um, Ooh, that perhaps Spaniard be one, one of your surprise picks, but maybe not okay. really when I explain it. For me, I've gone Busquets. Okay. Um, and the reason is, I was thinking, I, I want my team to win matches. And obviously, I think they would because they're an unbelievable team anyway. But I'm thinking, I want someone to keep things tight to break up play to play that Makalele role now I couldn't go for Makalele we'll see why uh, later on oh. uh, but um, the next best then in that Makalele role I think is Bush gets and it's the same thing we both love that Barca side we used to talk about it all the time um, sensational gets, side yeah. that Pep Guardiola side and, and Bush gets was so vital to it wasn't he he was the man who kept everything he already allowed Iniesta he allowed Messi he allowed everyone else to play because yeah. he was the guy who stood there and break up, break I up play I feel like that was a quite a hipster sort of a uh... It was yeah. Bolso. I mean, I was thinking about, I want a CDM. Who's the best yeah. CDM ever? He, he was if picked, it's not Makalele, it's Pushkets. He was picked by a few listeners, actually, as well. But yeah, it, for me, it was... Well, I, I actually watched the highlights of the 2009 Champions League final. And I think, I think Busquets Did he play that? He might have. Um, or it was 2011 he played his first one. Anyway, uh, Xavi was playing, and Xavi was unreal. So I had him in my team originally, and then I remembered Iniesta, yeah. and I prefer him, so I put Iniesta in. But yeah, Busquets and a lot. Xavi actually was one of the most mentioned players of all. Of all. Um, it's not surprising, is it? But yeah, f- fantastic players there. So Busquets, yeah. I mean, you could, you could have a McLeary, but obviously you, you can't. because I can't. Well, player. I'll tell you why I couldn't. Um, the reason why is because I've got uh, Zinedine Zidane. And so have I. There he is. There he is. Well, in, number four for you. Well, I think the four is... I prefer to have a number four as centre midfielder, and I prefer five and six as my centre-backs. Okay. Fair. There you go. Fair. Um, number eight for me, uh, just because... Number ten's taken. Um, yeah. So, 
Yeah, Zidane. I mean, for me, sensational. Uh, obviously, the headbutt. I reminisce on the headbutt. I watched it the other day, actually, just because just wanted to rewatch the headbutt. Unbelievable. Do you think that added to his appeal? I think it did because uh, I was watching it with a couple of friends, and obviously, um, some people who weren't that interested in football, but they knew about the headbutt. I think. Yeah. He's so widely known now. Actually, I was watching. You know, obviously Real Madrid manager and we're watching some Real Madrid highlights and you know Gareth Bale's playing and stuff now which is great to see um, but everyone knows the dad so oh that's the bloke who headbutted him I've been in a drama this week yeah. um, and helping doing some acting uh, and we had to do a fight scene and I did a headbutt like Zidane so yeah this, the headbutt's key yeah. but also he was sensational wasn't he he was uh, just yeah. absolutely sensational it's that game against Brazil the 2006 World Cup where he just, I mean, Brazil were favourites to win that tournament. He said Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, yeah. and so on. But um, yeah, he actually ran the show. I think in the first minute, he does like a, he does like a roulette turn, and he does a few, a few out of the skills. Yeah. He's just unbelievable. Player. I mean, if you've never seen uh, listeners, Zidane, a twenty first century portrait. Mm. Uh, that clip, or it's, it's a, it's a film, is a feature length film, sort of ninety minutes of a camera just on Zidane with him saying some really. He gets, he gets sent off, doesn't he? Some funny quotes. Yeah, he gets sent yeah. off in the game. I don't know if he does that on purpose because you know he's being filmed. In this I, don't, game. I don't think so. He loses but his head, it's unbelievable. Play. You just see the technique, everything. Yeah, you know, what a player. I do feel this is going to be controversial, but if he didn't headbutt Matarazzi, he wouldn't be in as many teams. Oh. It I is controversial, but I think it has added to the legend. I he's, think he's has. a Family Guy. He's always a Family Guy yeah. where. He had but someone. Yeah. There you go. Interesting. I was watching um, the highlights of that game and Matarazzi scores in the final, isn't he? And then Zidane scores yeah. a penalty and then he headbutts Matarazzi. So it's like the whole final is about them. In the shootout. Yeah. yeah. So it is, yeah, incredible. Um, yeah, no, I, I've, I think that probably is a fair point because he's, he's ingrained, like we said, in more people's heads because of that, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah more people's heads. Yeah. Pardon the pun. Yeah. Um, but he is actually the most mentioned set midfielder on the whole yeah, thing yeah, set, 75 mentions and um, again there's lots of yeah, French yeah. players who could be there so the fact that these people's French pick is shows how good he was cool right last one then you want to go first ok my last pick um, and it, it partly explains why uh, Bush gets is there to sort of tighten things up because they've got quite an attacking one I've gone for uh, wearing number 14 Johan Cruyff I've also got Cruyff in my team there he is looking splendid but he's number 7 in mine because I've only really got 1 to 11 I was gonna. Uh, he was gonna have to be seven in mine as well, but I um I thought he can't. Be so why have you got Cruyff? Why have I got Cruyff? Why haven't I got Cruyff? And um, I, I was struggling. <laughs> I was struggling. Uh, I was struggling to solidify my, solidify my midfield. Um, but then you just think back to that seventy four. I've already said how much I like the seventy four World Cup. He was uh, king in that. He really did help revolutionise football. He's obviously got a turn named after him. Uh, the that turn, turn is the best skill in football. It's so easy to do, yeah, but it's so effective. Like you know, the the um, the rainbow flick, it looks amazing, but it's bloody hard to pull off. Whereas a quote turn is pretty easy and it works every time. Yeah. It's so I love it. Yeah, I think so, absolutely. The, I mean, Cruyff, uh, you can give us the stats in a second. I'm sure of how many teams he's in. But as yeah. a as a tandem with Zidane, I'm thinking they're going to pull the strings. It's going to be superb there. Yeah, uh, I've actually got a few more stats about Cruyff, actually. I actually printed off his, his overall stats. So, um, obviously, Ajax is his, main, his first tier and moved to Barcelona. Three Champions Leagues or three European uh, Cups? Yeah, it? so we've got, we've got nine Dutch Leagues, six Dutch Cups, three Champions Leagues. You want the uh, La Liga, Cup del Rey, uh, 290 goals, 514 games. I mean, some people have got him in their team as an attacker. Some people have got him in their team yeah, as yeah. a midfielder. Yeah. Uh, we both put him in midfield purely I imagine because of our attackers um, but also I think he can he, he three can a little bit a little bit deeper if you want to can't you yeah three ballon doors there World Cup golden ball yeah he's, he's won it all basically um, picked in over 50 of the teams mm. very very popular but he was picked mm. right across this attack and right across him to field in all different places so I, I, yeah Sensational player, and expensive. and one of those players who actually made a very good manager as well. It doesn't always cross over, does it? That the good players become the good managers. I think. Well, yeah, Zidane obviously, yeah, he yeah. obviously won stuff, and Beckenbauer as well. There you go, but yeah, cool. done very well. Good. There's our midfielders. Um, I think we're gonna have another break. We'll come back for a quiz and maybe someone else's audio team too. Hey guys, Tom here. Um, yeah, before I get started, just want to say love in the pod. Keep it going. Um, I'm a couple of episodes behind. I'll be honest because. Quite frankly, my car's rubbish. So, yeah. Um, but loving all the quizzes and the challenges and stuff. That's my favourite part. Uh, right, my team, Nan, for this, this this challenge this week. I've got in goal, I've got the big big Dutchman, uh, Edwin van der Sar. 
um, when he's protected by a back four of Philip Lahm, Vidic, Cannavaro and Ashley Cole. My midfield three, I've got Iniesta, Roy Keane and Zidane. And then my front three, I've got my home player, which is Wales, which I've got Gareth Bale on the right. I've got Cristiano Ronaldo through the middle. And then left flank, I've got Ronaldinho, who's my favourite player ever. Just a little side note. Uh, notable mentions should go to Giggsy. I was going to choose him for my Welsh, Welsh player, but couldn't see him fitting into the team. And Sir Dybex, same reason. I wanted him in, but couldn't get him into the system. So there you go. Thanks, guys. Thanks for that, Tom. Uh, really good uh, team now, do you think? Yeah, superb team. Ronaldinho, we both said love a bit of Ronaldinho, but obviously we've got Cafu, so we couldn't, but... What yeah, we uh, Tom's actually got his own podcast called Chatty Chatty Bang Bang. Very funny to talk, talk about all sorts, uh, TV, film, and just funny stories. So if you have got, want to listen, lift that up and give that a listen as well. Um, right, so looking at some midfielders that were chosen by the listeners. Uh, the most, as I've said before, was Zidane, 75 Cruyff comes in second, 51 times, followed by Xavi, 45, Iniesta, 40, and someone from Tom's team, Roy Keane, 33 times he came up. Wow. Irish, maybe. Irish again, yeah, freeze you and, and again, maybe if you're looking for someone who's a bit more uh, stabilising in your midfield. Yeah, and you got, one of the ones I did think was interesting was from our very first um response from Gallen Gardner, Canadian listener. Um they said they got Christine Sinclair in Edfield. So they couldn't think of any good Canadian footballers. So they've gone for um one of the best women's players of all time, Christine Sinclair, which I think is more than uh, okay to Yeah, they rejected my shout over Carlos Junior Hoylet. But yeah. fair enough. Well yeah, fair enough. Uh yeah, so uh, some good midfielders. We've got players like Gascoigne popping up, um Platini, a lot of mentions, Bobby Charlton Actually, interesting. So our listeners from uh, Taiwan has got a midfielder, Po Liang, in their team. So they've used up their um, their Taiwanese influence. Uh, we've also got one from Indonesia here. They've got um, uh, Vijayan in midfield. So do you know him? No. Okay. There we go. So yeah, loads of different players. Skulls came up quite a few times. Gerard a lot of times. Yeah, um, Matthias we've got here. Nedved. Oh, I loved Nedved. I'm a big fan of Nedved. Love Nedved. Yeah. Joe Wimster Ru- with Nedved. Rui Costa quite a lot of times. He, uh, Hans Lang- Langer has picked him. Uh, yeah, lovely. Mascherano. This is our Busquets role for you guys in there. Yeah, Georgi Hadji, Luis Figo, Socrates. Uh, not to be confused with the... Um, Arsenal centre back. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> good players. Uh, Guardiola, Vieira. Yeah, excellent. Right, should we do a quiz? Let's have a bit of a quiz break. All right, then. So, back on to the 40 or so football quiz questions for you, G Man. You got one and a half out of five last I week. I had a bad week last week. Yeah, not great. <laughs> <laughs> right, so here we go. Question one. Okay. Which country did both Bobby Charlton in 1970? And then Terry Butcher in 1990 played their last match against which country? Was Charlton's at the World Cup? Uh, yes. It was, actually. Uh, that should be a good clue. So who did they get eliminated to? I'll give you a clue. They lost 3-2 after extra time. A lot of dead air time here. <laughs> Come on. Was it Brazil? It was not. No, it was West Germany. There you go. Yeah, so they, they came back to they? Okay, so next question. Didn't get that one right, but I think they get easier from now on, okay? All right. All right, question two. Harry Kane was the first English player to win the Premier League Golden Boot since which other English footballer? What do you think? That's really interesting. Any ideas? Uh, you, yeah, uh, well, Ooh, I know wow. Kevin Phillips won it, um, but I think Alan Shearer surely has won it. After him, maybe not. Maybe it is just Kevin Phillips. Yeah, got Thierry Henry then, haven't you? Stuff. Are you going for? I go. Let's go, Kevin Phillips. Correct. Yeah, Kevin Phillips. Do you know what year? Two thousand. Yeah, nineteen ninety two thousand. Well done, Kevin Phillips. Yeah, so that's a point for you there. Southampton, isn't it? Uh, Sunderland. Sunderland. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sunderland. Black. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Red and white stripes. Yeah. 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 yeah, cool. Right. Next question. We have the Stadio Giuseppe Miazza in Milan is better known by what name? Oh, I like that one. I've written about this in the past. Um, it is it is the San Siro. It is. Good stuff. And, and who is Giuseppe Miazza? 
one of the greatest Italians of that period, isn't he? Of the, the 1930s. Yeah, the um, World Cup winning team. Yeah, World Cup winning team. Mm-hmm. Uh, phenomenal player. Read about our articles on the website, footballhistoryboys.com, for that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so isn't it only called the Jets Giuseppe Mazzo when Inter Milan play there and it's the San Siro when AC play there? I think there's some sort of difference uh, like maybe, that. I think it's just called Giuseppe Mazzo because he played he play for both, didn't he? Yeah, okay. And yeah. I'm pretty sure San Siro is just the area of Milan right, okay. that it's in. But I don't know. I'll look that up. Right, okay. Question, you're already doing better than last week. Look Come two. on. Right, question three. Ooh, right, this is a nickname one. Okay, so there's four questions in this one, okay? Okay. Okay, can you name the English football clubs from the following <laughs> nicknames? Like it. Okay, who are the railway men? What oh, do you think? okay. I'll give you a quarter of a point for each one you get right. There's a few... Um, strict. Okay, qu- a quarter of a point. Yeah, because there's, there's four. A, okay. There's a few... Transport based ones, isn't it? Because <laughs> the tractor boys are uh, Ipswich. Yeah. So the railway men are someone who is famous for railways. Well, Swindon's famous for railways, but it's not Swindon. They're the Robins. No. Did Cot Parkway, they haven't got a team. Yeah. <laughs> London Paddington. Um, let's go with the railway men. Let me have a think on it and give me give me the next one. Okay, come next back. one is the Shakers. You should get this. Yeah. Top Do you know what it is? Topical. Do this topical. Yeah. Berry. Yeah. Yeah, Berry. Berry. Yeah. Well, how, how sad. Yeah, right. it is sad. I think, yeah, we, we'll, we'll mention it now then, I guess. Yeah, really, really sad to see about Berry. Obviously, ejected from the Football League this week because of their financial trying to sell the club and what's gone in there. It's a really, really difficult situation. It is. Berry, One of the yeah. founding members of the Football League. Yeah, two time FA Cup winners. It's really, really sad to see what's happened there. And, and thankfully, Bolton seem to have been saved at time of recording with the uh, takeover. But there's hope for Berry. There's a, there's a bid in them, isn't there, to buy the club. Um, and hopefully. The EFL will decide to potentially let them yeah. back in. They're appealing it. Uh, but yeah. So, yeah. Right, next one, the Pirates. So I can give you a quote already, can't I? The Pirates are next. And the last one, shall I give you the old nickname or the new nickname? Let's see if I can get the old one. The Throstles. Okay, give me the new one. <laughs> <laughs> the Baggies. The Baggies is obviously West Brom. Okay, that's so another quarter of a point there. So you're either two you need to get are the Railway Men and the Pirates. The Pirates. The Pirates. That's going to be someone who is close to the sea. Yeah. It's not Plymouth. No. It's not... What's Plymouth's it name? The house. No. What is it? Argyle. No, what is it? What is Plymouth? Argyle. Oh, that's my father-in-law's team. I should know that. Argyle. They call them Argyle, don't they? Oh, yeah. Green Army. They do have a good hoe there, though. Um, yeah. You ever been there? Yeah. I've been to um, Home Park. Yeah. Oh, watch them go. Watch them play Chelsea under-21s in the... Uh, what's the cup they play them in? Check a trade trophy. Isn't it? That's oh, where yeah. the N21 sides take part. Some quality Chelsea players playing there. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, let's have a think. Pirates, I'm going to go with, let's just get out there and go someone on the sea, South End. Okay, incorrect. Bristol Rovers. Oh, of course it is, yeah. And the Railway Men. And the Railway Men, let's go with, again, listeners have got this straight off the bat, probably. It's not Warsaw, it's not. It's somewhere, it feels like it's around there, maybe up north. Let's go with someone like Shrewsbury. Uh, it was Crew Alexandra. Crew. Crew. Big train station, isn't it? It is, yeah. On one the way up to Manchester, yeah. One of the most important ones. Right, so that's, you got half a point there. So you got okay. two and a half now. Yeah. Uh, right. Just for a minute. Right, next question. So the final question <laughs> um, is, there are many professional football clubs that have taken a Beatles song as their nickname. VRL are the most famous. Yeah, Which so Beatles song got that. do they oh, take do. their name from? Yellow Submarine. The Submariners. Yeah. They? yeah. Yellow Submarine. Yeah, yeah Yellow Submarine. Well, Great. Good. Get in. So you got a final score. Three and a half. Three and a half out of five. Yeah, that's not bad. That's probably your best, actually. Um, right, should we do a question for the listeners? Yes. Okay. In 1970, in which country was England captain Bobby Moore accused... Of the theft of a bracelet from a jeweller's. There you go. What Great. a question. That Brilliant. Is. That is a good question. Let us know your answer. And again, in the usual ways, at TFHBS on Twitter. The Football History Boys at Hotmod.com for email. And on Facebook, The Football History Boys. Let's take <laughs> one more break and then we will come back with our strikers of our dream team. Strikers, who have we got then? 
Okay, I think I think we may well match on this just based on our favourite players. I do think. Well, yeah. Okay, let's start with uh, perhaps an obvious one. <laughs> <laughs> just to note that <laughs> Gareth has just ripped off the entire everything off the whiteboard there you go I think we're gonna <laughs> are we leaving that in? yeah okay we are leaving that in then fine okay um, <laughs> high right. quality post-it notes obviously very sticky so who's our first player? our first player we match wearing number 10 uh, Leo Lionel Messi who else who else but Leo right I got a couple of stats on Messi. Um, <laughs> do we need a couple of stats on Messi? Go yeah, on, just yeah, to further the legend. Like, right, so here we go. Games to goals. He's played 687 games for Barca. 603 goals. Decent return. Um, his best season, 2011-12. He scored 73 goals <laughs> in one season. And he followed it up with a measly 60 the following the following campaign. It's stupid, isn't it? That is, that is stupid, really. What, what a player. I mean, I can't remember anyone better than him. That I've watched. Can you? No, I don't think so. I, I, I actually, I don't know if we'll ever see. I, I can't imagine ever seeing anyone better than Messi and I'll reveal my next one then. Uh, Ronaldo, Cristiano. There's number seven. For number me. 11 for me. There he is. Slipped them in as well. Um, CR7. I said, oh, well, these are people who sort of mean something to me. I never liked Ronaldo. I really, I was always team Messi. I didn't like Man United. So, um, but uh, you cannot not <laughs> put him in. And actually, Yesterday, uh, at time of recording, um, he was interviewed alongside Messi. Did oh, you see the video of that? Brilliant, yeah. Yeah, really, really lovely chat about how one day he hopes he can have dinner and sort of reminisce with Messi and talked about how they've pushed each other on, which they absolutely have. Would we have seen Messi as good as he is? Would we have seen Ronaldo as good as he is? Definitely if it wasn't not. Barca versus Real, Portugal, Argentina, you know, the, the, the international stage, the European stage, the glory that they both pushed each other towards. I, I, I really liked it, actually. I thought it was quite good as the... Uh, the report, uh, Rashmi Chowdhury. Brilliant. She, she did an amazing job. Brilliant. Just switch between, <laughs> just switch between the languages. Spanish and English. Incredible. And Ronaldo, in fairness. Yeah. So just switch between Spanish um, and English as well. Um, oh, it's sensational. It's a question I've always wanted to ask myself and they, and she asked it. So yeah, yeah. talking about their relationship and, uh, how they do actually get on pretty well. So yeah, and, and I'm I'm really glad about that. And that, that endeared me a little bit to all, more towards him even yesterday. Cause I just think, you know, when we look back on this period, I can't imagine there being, for 15 years, as, as Ronaldo said, 15 years of them pushing each other to score as many goals as possible, for them both looking annoyed when glory goes to the other other side. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's just, it's been what an era of football and it'll be talked about like we now look back on Pele and Maradona and, and people like that. It absolutely, it's going to be reminisced on. So, Cristiano Ronaldo, 807 career games, 601 goals. Um, <laughs> that's probably more to do his gap between goals and games. It's more because of his... My United time, I think. As a winger, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah he wasn't a, as much of a goal yeah. scorer at first. Um, but his time at Real Madrid, he's got more goals than games. Yeah. Quite quite comfortably as well. So, yeah, yeah what a player. Yeah, and I mean, I, I initially had him as my number nine goal scorer. Um, but I've, I've moved him around. He is out wide for He's me. won more Champions Leagues than Messi now, hasn't he? He's got five, hasn't he, Ronaldo? Yeah. And he's got the European Championship, yeah. the Euro 2016, Nations League, you know. He is backing yeah. up now because he was quite blind at one stage. Yeah, and he is cocky, but you, yeah, I guess he's allowed to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess he's All allowed right, to final be. Final one. Is it final the same one again? for us? I think it probably could be the same. Our strikers, yeah, for me as well. Number nine, Frank Pushkas. Yeah, Pushkas for me as well. Uh, who is who is he? I hear people Pushkasking us. <laughs> My favourite ever historical player. I would respond with yeah. Um, Absolutely superb. I mean, you know, we are for Richard Boyson, so we talk about the history of the, this beautiful game. Um, uh, just a hero, wasn't he, of the 1950s, 1960s, 1954 World Cup, and we've talked about how what a crime it was that the, Mag- the Magyars, Hungary, didn't win that. But yeah. just sensational. Uh, club level two um, was 85, 84 goals, 85 games for, for Hungary, Hungary yeah. and then for Real Madrid, something like 300-odd goals. Yeah, so his total uh, league appearances is 521. Totally goals, 508. That is mental, yeah. isn't it? That is madness. But that hungry record, 84 and 85, is disgustingly good. Yeah. Um, but what player, I mean, we talked about it before, me, the game with the uh, match of the century against England. Yes. When the Magical Magyars won 6 3. Yeah. Um, but surprisingly, he wasn't the most mentioned Magyar in yeah. the list. The most mentioned Magyar was centre midfielder Joseph Boschik. Uh, he came up about, I think, 11 times, and Puskas only came up 10 times. 
Um, and then Coxis also came out a couple of times. Yeah, um, I think I think that front yeah. three of Messi, Ronaldo, and, and Pushkas. Can you imagine? Pushkas obviously probably not as fit as the other two. Um, oh. I think he liked to drink the knee and, and a smoke. Um, yeah. Back in the day, but three European Cups, banging the goals, very left footed as well, apparently. Uh, and I'm very excited actually for a Jonathan right, Wilson it. book to come out about that Magyars team coming out soon, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, looking forward to that. Yes, uh, he was in the FIFA 100. He was in Europe. He was the European Player of the 20th Century, but from L'Equipe uh, magazine, Hungarian Player of the 20th Century, four Spanish uh, top goal scorers, four times in the World Eleven. Yeah, what a player. What is some of the other favourite picks from uh, various people across the world? Then? Right, strikers actually was a good one because most team most teams had Messi and Ronaldo. So Ronaldo was actually was actually the most picked. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, he was picked uh, ninety eight times, and Messi ninety seven times. So there you go. Um, oh, Messi would be happy with that. Third highest pick was Ronaldo, number nine. So the Brazilian Ronaldo, he was picked in sixty teams. A lot of teams had a front three of. Messi, Ronaldo, Ronaldo. And I'd be very tempted by Ronaldo again. Incredible. Though. What a player he was. Um, yeah, so actually, so this is why it was quite good, the strikers. We had loads of different picks. We have George Best came up a lot of times. Obviously, Maradona came up. So whenever Messi wasn't mentioned as the Argentinian, it seemed to be Maradona taking his place. Um, Ibrahimovic, a couple of times. Burkamp, Henri. John um, Charles from some of the Welsh people up front. This yeah, one. Bale, a lot of Welsh Bale, people. a lot of our Welsh followers. Uh, yeah. Daglish, uh, Ronaldinho, as Tom said in his team. Nedved, Batistuta, um, Suarez, JJ Kocha, one of our best ever transfers. Uh, Drogba, so the, the African influence. Eto, Di Stefano, one of our transfers as well. Uh, yeah, I mean... Just every player I've just named is an absolute legend. Garincha, Pele, um, Billy Meredith from the Welsh one there. Yeah. Um, Jan Collar, he came up. Oh, uh, I was loved Jan Collar. Matthew Massive Baldwin. Was he six, eight? Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, he, he absolutely beat him in Barros, wasn't it, in the year 2004. Yeah. Um, was, was, that, was that person Czech? Do I, no, he was, he was English. Oh, there you go. That was Matthew Baldwin's team, which is quite an interesting team. It was Khan, Cafu, Charles, yes. Duncan Edwards, Maldini, Mascherano, Yaya Torre, Zidane, Best, Collar, Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, he's probably done people who mean something to him as well, I imagine. Yeah, that I, way. I like that team. I thought um, one reply was very interesting. got a lot of traffic just because of who he was. Gabri- Gabriel Marcotti, the uh, yeah. very talented journalist. I've noted his team down here. I've, I've highlighted some teams in orange. Yeah, let's have a look at his team. Because he, again, he got people saying, I can't believe you picked this and that. But he said he picked players that mean something to him as well. So you got Neville Southall and goal. Yeah. Uh, Dario Schirner, a right back. Interesting. Uh, Metzelder, centre back. There you go. Sergio Ramos. Uh, Julian Dix at left back. Uh, Roy Keane, Ingolo Kante, Rui Costa, Di Canio, Van Basten, Maradona. It's so interesting that uh, he picked Di Canio as his Italian. Of all, yeah, of all the Italian players. But then it, if it means something to him, yeah. you know, he obviously seen, he's seen a lot of matches of football. He has. So I imagine these players have all just stuck with him and he just can't yeah. do better. Yeah. Uh, yeah, talk about John Charles as well. We had Lanish and FC uh, mentioned in that John Charles' um, son was the PE teacher at the school, so they had to mention him in their team. Um, but yeah, really good, really good players around. Ian Rush, there you go. Totti. Yeah. I mean, every, every name I'm saying, I'm just like, wow. But I'll go back to my surprises from earlier. Pele was my biggest surprise of everyone. Okay. Because, I mean, I know he, he was playing in the 50s, um, 60s, so you, you might, people would might not think about him these days, but you still think Pele would get a, a lot of mentions. You think he'd get more than 15 mentions out of 184 teams. So we call him Pele underrated. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah. He must be, and also, big surprise, Gerd Muller won. Only one person chose Gerd Muller in their team. I think that probably says more about the nations that those those players come from as well. That They've obviously Back produced Bally, yeah. such a class of player. I mean, with with Pele, yeah, you've got obviously Cafu, Carlos, um, Ronaldo, Rivaldo, so many other options you could have Rivaldo picked. Rivaldo wasn't picked by anyone. Not at all. No, nope. Romario was. Um, Van Basten only got eight. Henri only got eight. I mean, Zidane and Cruyff again. Eusebio? Eusebio had a few. He must have had about 10, 11. Yeah, he did okay. all right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, fantastic players. Laudrup, Denmark there. So should we read out our overall combined fans and Evan then? Yes, right. So, how are we doing this? Are we just doing the most of each position, or are we doing it 
So stick with the rules. Stick with the rules. Right, okay. So that means we have to have a Welsh player in there then. Uh, not necessarily. I don't think we have to have a Welsh player because obviously this is a fans 11 picked from across the world. So I don't think you necessarily need to... Okay, right, yeah. Okay, okay. The team in goals, we have Peter Schmeichel, Denmark. There we go. Uh, the Great Dane. We have at right back, Cafu, the Brazilian. Uh, and centre back, centre backs, we have Franz Beckenbauer from Germany and Nemanja Vidic from Serbia with a left back, the most mentioned of all, Paolo Maldini of Italy. Now, actually, at right back, Philip Lahm had more votes than Cafu, but two Germans, yes. Beckenbauer, yeah. Beckenbauer had more than Lahm. Okay, centre midfielders, we have Xavi. Cruyff and Zidane. So Xavi makes it. Yeah, just ahead of Iniesta. So not a bad, not a bad midfield three there. No. Uh, and up front we have Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo and Northern Ireland's George Best because Cafu was already picked so we couldn't have Ronaldo in the team. Superb. Well, I mean, what a side that is. And thank you for everyone who took part. Just looking at our sides uh, for a final time, we only actually differ on three players. And as I said, I would have almost put Iniesta in had I not gone thinking I want a CDM. So we only differ there in the midfield there. Uh, I've gone Charles, you've gone Southall for your Welsh influence, and therefore you've gone Moore and I've gone Schmeichel. So we only differ in three players. Yeah, I wonder if anyone who's picked their team has actually picked the final team. Maybe we should check that in a bit. Yeah, that'd be quite nice. We'll get back to you on that. Right, do you want to do your quiz then? Yeah, let's do it. So let's have another quiz before our final summary chat. And then we've got the PFA quiz. I'm looking forward to that one later on. Okay. The quote quiz. So guess the year. That'd be jubbly. Guess the year. 2019. Correct. Yes. Guess the historical year. Ah. Incorrect. (laughs) Okay, no. Right. Ready? Let's go. So. First question, maybe a little bit of a depressing or dark one. Oh. 17th of August this year, oh. Rudolf Hess, oh, yeah. deputy leader of the Nazi party under Adolf Hitler, commits suicide in his prison post-World War II. So he's caught, he's tried, he's sentenced to life in prison, he commits suicide this year. Oh, I, I, I am a Wikipedia actually, a few, a few a while ago. Right, I'm going to go 1970. 12th of November. The first Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant in mainland China opens in Beijing near Tiananmen Square. 1984. 20th of June. The first Rugby World Cup final takes place in Eden Park, Auckland. New Zealand beat uh, France 29-9. 19... Oh, this is tough now. When was the first one? 91? Okay. American pop artist Andy Warhol dies aged 58. I'll stick with 91. This will change it. July 27th, Rick Astley releases the hit single Never Gonna Give You Up. 87. April 19th, The Simpsons first appear as part of the Tracy Ullman show. 87. The European Cup ends final ends 2-1 to Bayern Munich of Porto. 87. Can you guess what I clue then? Your final clue, 87, is a fo- football clue, is it? It's, a, it's uh, who was born. Oh, is it a footballer being born? Yeah. Uh, Messi? Lionel. Yeah, Lionel Messi is born on the 24th of June. That's not, I did right then. Yeah, not bad. You got it's it. The first World Rugby World Cup. I Rick sure. Astley gives it to you, or is the World Cup? Well, it was a World Cup, I was thinking 87, 91. Fine. Guess who was also born in 87? Uh... I did see it. It was, it was another footballer. I can't remember. Well, a lot of people were born. Yeah, not, uh, <laughs> my brother was born in 87. Okay. So there you go. It was another footballer. I can't think who he was, though. Um, let's have a break, and then we'll come back with our final chat, final game. Okay, welcome back to the final time. Let's just have a little Champions League chat, because the, gro- the groups have just been drawn. Can't wait for the Champions League. Yeah. Got, I've got BE Sport this year as well, so I'll be able to watch it at home again, which will oh, be Oh, you've it, I, well, I've had to go to the pub to watch it, which is fine, oh, okay. but um, I can't wait to have Silly. it back home. Okay, right. What uh, what kind of fixtures are you thinking are going to be quite juicy? I mean, the one that jumps out straight away in Group A is obviously PSG Real Madrid, the Neymar derby, potentially. Yeah, you think he's going to Real, do you? <sighs> they just don't want to seem to send him to Barca, do they? No. They really don't want to send him to Barca. I mean, it may end up he stays at this point. There's only... 
What, three days left he's, the window? He's not. I don't like him at all, Neymar. No, he's undermining any sort of... It's a fool for moving in the first place. Really. Legacy he could have, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. but Real and PSG could to be going through for that group, I think. Yes. Yeah, Gartash, yeah. I, I suppose, is yeah, a bit of a challenge, but I think they'll be okay. Yeah. Group B, um, obviously Bayern and Tottenham in that group. That could be quite a nice tie. That would be a game. I think they're both going to struggle going away to uh, Red Star Belgrade. Though. Do you want to try and pronounce the... Sorvena Zvezda. Yeah. Um, and also as a historical game in 91 between Bayern and Red Star um, yeah. the year that Red Star won the Champions League I think yeah obviously got a massive history in the cu- in the competition isn't it so it's good to see them and they beat Liverpool last year didn't they it? yeah right group th- C not a very good group no Man City wore that comfortable yeah I think maybe Atalanta maybe yeah they the debut in the Champions League aren't they yeah, yeah nice, nice to see like like a new a new side in the Champions League group uh, D is quite good yeah locomotive Moscow obviously Russia I think generally is just a Difficult place to travel, so that's hard. But they're not very good teams, are they? No. Juventus and, and Atleti, that could be quite interesting to watch. Bayern, aren't, Bayern Leverkusen aren't too bad a side either. Juventus so. and Atleti obviously played in the knockout stage last season, didn't they? And yes. quite a few feisty fixtures. Yeah, and, and uh, when we did our predictions, obviously I tipped Juventus back then. Oh, you did, didn't you? Yeah, so we'll see enough. how yeah. they do. We'll okay. see how they do. Group E, are you happy Liverpool's group? Yeah, comfortable. I think Napoli will be d- difficult again away, um, but I don't I, think Salzburg and Genk are going to propose much of it. I think a that's problem. a bit of a dream draw for Liverpool in that. Yeah, I mean, you've got the, a decent little fixture against Napoli, and then you've got two easy ones. Yeah, probably yeah. Yeah. Right, Group F's of the best group. Oh, what a group. Unless you're Slavia group. Prague. I think it sums it up. The Slavia Prague, uh, the, the video going round, isn't it, of the um, <laughs> yeah. the Slavia Prague sort of delegates, whoever they are, the, the board members, whoever were there for them, sort of just laughing when they, they saw their group, Barcelona, Borussia Dortmund, Inter Milan, Slavia Prague. Yeah, I think some, I think Barca will go through comfortably, but I think um, Dortmund and uh, Inter will be a really big, really great games to watch. Yeah, I've been to Slavia actually. I went to watch them play in the Eden Arena. Um, brilliant fans. They'll have some cracking ties there. Stadium. Uh, yeah, I think they're they're gonna they're gonna be on the end of some batteries. Highlands, yeah. Right, Group G. Pretty. There's always one lane group, isn't there? I mean, Group C is pretty lame. I don't. I mean, I'm into Group G because of Ethan Ampertuk. He's at uh, Leipzig this year. I don't think he's gonna play much, is he? Though mm. he's already been, he already hasn't been picked or dropped, has he? Yeah. But um, I think that'll be a good group purely because. It's very, very difficult to call. And Zenit are a tough team as well. They're not, a, they're not an easy team to play. No, I mean, I'd go for Benfica and Leon in that group. But then, you know, Zenit, they were yeah. first seed, so... Uh, and that and final, group, final group, Chelsea's group. Um, obviously, they, they got in via winning the Europa League uh, and were a top seed. And so they've been rewarded with Ajax, uh, Liel and Valencia as well. I think Chelsea a few years ago, I'd say would walk that group. But now I'm thinking... A couple of tough ties. Four teams at similar level. Valencia away at Mestalla... Liel aren't, aren't easy and um, obviously Ajax had a phenomenal season they, yep. they've been decimated their side haven't they sadly over the summer yeah, but um, they've got Tadic so. I still think yeah I still think they could be de- you know, they could do a decent job I, I imagine Chelsea progress but maybe not maybe not top who knows no and maybe with a couple of draw and maybe a defeat yeah, yeah. good stuff so that should be good uh, good few months watching then yeah absolutely and I think um, excited for the international break as well see Wales back in action yeah. despite the fact it doesn't look like we're going to Speaking of international break, Wales women yesterday won 6 0. Yeah, the really Wales. positive. A 15 year old made a debut as well. Wow, that's amazing, isn't that's it? As a professional, uh, you know, international footballer. I watched the England game as well. They uh, drew with Belgium 3 all. Great game. Yeah, yeah bit, of a, bit of a shock at that, really, isn't it? Belgium didn't even qualify for the League. No, World Cup. and England were 2 0 up as well. They went 3 2 down. Shall we do our PFA quiz then? Yeah, you enjoyed it last week, didn't you? Oh, brilliant quiz. So, I did a little theme this week. Because of the, obviously, our overall theme is picking the greatest 11 of all time. Yes. Uh, I've chosen six players that have all been mentioned by our listeners in their dream teams. So, the, of the you know hundreds of players that were mentioned, these six were. Your six players are Alan Shearer, David Ginola, Sol Campbell, Roy Keane, John Barnes, and the little Janino. Janino Paulista, okay? So Love all me. six players are mentioned in people's teams, some more than others. So here's your first quote. And remind us of the year of the PFA album. Uh, 1997. Okay, right. One day, I want to take my family backpacking up the Amazon. Who said that? Whose quote? Of all the quotes they could have said, was that? I don't reckon she was interested in that. I think Ginola may want to do that. You want Ginola, have you? Okay. Go for him. Uh, right. So that's it. Pick. Right. Next. Many bars. We'll see. Okay. 
You can obviously you can change as you go, can't you? Yeah. Right. Well, next one. Oh, this might give it away. Actually, this probably will give it away. I want. I came home to Newcastle, but I want a trophy on the shelf. Alan. Alan Shearer. Alan Shearer. Okay. Uh, next one. I'm gonna go to this one. A little bit more spread out this week, see, because I have to find different players. Right. Okay. I just had to join the club managed by the great Brian Robson. <laughs> I just had to join the club managed by the great Brian Robson. Who said that? Uh, I think then that would have been Roy Keane. Okay. Next one. I nearly gave up soccer for Gaelic football and boxing. Roy Keane. <laughs> okay. Right. Next one. We're going to go by sure. Okay, it's good to be able to help the young Liverpool players just as I was helped. That's John Barnes. Okay, you've got Barnes there. And I've got one more to go. Okay. They call me Soul Man, but I like other music as well. Wow. Who said that? They call me Soul Man. Okay, so Shearer, I'm locking in as the guy who mentions Newcastle. Okay. Backpacking, I'll go with Janine. Okay. Uh, we'll go with the Soul Man being Soul Campbell. Okay. Get it football. It's got to be Keen. Yeah. And then we've got Robson. The great Brian Robson. As Jenner and Barnes as the Liverpool player. Okay, right. So you got John Barnes correct. Well done. That's one point. You got Alan Shearer correct. Well done. That's one point. You also got Sol Campbell correct. Well done. The Soul Man. Soul Man. Um, there you go. And then the other three, you sort of jumbled them up. So ah, okay. Janino wanted to be managed by the great Brian Robson, Middlesbrough. Ginola wanted to take his family on a backpacking holiday up the Amazon. Sounds lovely. And uh, Roy Keane... I do, I do Roy King got right, right, because he was Gaelic football, yeah. yeah. So Roy Keane was right too. So you four got four. Out of six. Four out of six. That's two better than last week. Well done. Brilliant. Lovely. Lovely. That's a good quiz. Quiz. Great quiz. Okay, just final thing then before we go, just to mention the Fantasy League. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the last week uh, this weekend, uh, by the time it's released, we'll be in that last week, before the international break, where you can. I like to make my changes at the international break. Perhaps play about with a few. I'm saving up some transfers to do that. Um, and just to say, if you want to join our fantasy league, you can do that. That's the code HHTKHY. Okay, first at the moment then is Everald Brown, whose team, Blue Nose Legends, are on 193 points. Two ahead of Lewis Williams and Gareth Thomas. So, Gareth, you're in joint second with 191 <sighs> points. I've lost my crown. I am down in 31st. Um, but I have gone up a few places. So I'm 149 points. Uh, not bad. Um, I'm hoping for a good week. I'm captain in Sterling against Brighton. I'm mm. thinking there could be that. It could be a five now. We've got, yeah, it could be actually. We've got 50 teams now altogether. It's quite pretty good at Much more than we usually get. So yeah, 31st, not bad. Um, and then my own five aside team, um, Rodri Davis is first. And I'm fifth in our mid table. So there we go. Not bad. Yeah, brilliant. Well, I've really enjoyed today's show. Thank you to everyone who's got involved. We've had so many people. It's, it's brilliant to have so many people involved across the world. As we said, yeah, 35 plus countries, more than that. Um, I've enjoyed looking through some of the collections of names and stuff. Perhaps we'll publish the final list in some form of uh, article yeah. on the website. That's quite good. That'd yeah, be great actually. to do. Um, and we'll post some of the pictures from, as we said, the My Greatest 11 site on uh, when we promote the pod too. That'll be great. Yeah, lovely. Uh, yeah, thanks very much. Thank you to all of you, and thank you uh, t- for hosting me in your house too, Ben. It's no looking problem. lovely. Yeah, it's coming along, isn't it? Yeah. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.